So, uh, in the previous uh, one, so I, I, I have just uh, showed that uh, uh, there, there's a difference between AHM and AHM. And actually, AH of M is a union of the H, H something, the H, H of the manifold homotopy equivalent to M. So, uh, now we are going to turn to the uh, third definition of the deformation space. So, in the case of the uh, surface group, so it, it was a deformation space, quasi conformal deformation space of the of Huxian representation, which was called a quasi Huxian space. So, we should first construct something corresponding to. Uh, Huxian representation for, for in this setting in a, in a general for a general three manifold. So that's what I'm going to uh, tell you now. So uh, first um, I need to define geometric finiteness. On. Uh, the, 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 this is the notion uh, about the uh, uh, Kleinian group. So uh, suppose G is uh, finitely generated, torsion-free Kleinian group. So uh, I define a limit set for a uh, Fuchsian representation, but uh, in general for a Kleinian group we can define uh, the, the limit, it's limit set in the same way. That is a point on a, the closure of the, the set of points on a Riemann sphere, which is um, the points which are fixed by, by, by some elements. Um, which is not identity. And, uh, in, in in G. Okay. So the closure of the fixed point set of non 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 non, non, non identity elements of G. Okay. That limit set. And so limit set is uh, oh because we take closure here. Limit set is a closed subset in uh, Riemann sphere. So it's something, that's, I don't know the, what, what, what kind of shape it has, but anyway, it's, a, it's, a, it's a some, some closed set. So from that, we define uh, the, it's a uh, convex hull. So what, what is called, what, 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 what is convex So we, we consider the, um, the smallest convex, um, smallest convex closed set in H3 containing all Geodesics whose endpoint lie on the limit set. So you consider all geodesics. So 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 the the so the the so here Riemann sphere is identified with the the boundary at infinity of the hyperbolic free space. So you consider Pancare model of hyperbolic free space. So the unit sphere is its boundary at infinity. So it, 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 uh, it, it's a boundary in, in an ideal way. So you cannot reach a boundary in a, in, within a finite time. So it, it's uh, some, 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 it, it lies somewhere at infinity. But so this unit sphere is uh, identified with Riemann sphere. Actually, the um, the conformal structure of the Riemann sphere is, is uh, 
something coming from the, the, the conformal structure induced on the unit sphere. So, so, it's, uh, so you can have that such a kind of identification. So um, when you consider a geodesic um, in H3, then uh, it's, well, you can, you can extend it to, well, to the infinity, and the point at the infinity lies on the, on the Riemann sphere. So you, you consider the, all, all the, so, so the, these should be, <laughs> so it, the geodesic should be, so as in the Koji stocks, so the, the geodesic is a kind of the, uh, so in, in this picture you, you, you have a circular arc like that, which is uh, orthogonal to the boundary, and that, that's a geodesic, and uh, so you, consider all the geodesics whose end points lie in, in this set. And consider a convex, convex subset, closed convex subset of H3 containing these geodesics. And they take the smallest one. That written like this. So then it's called the Nielsen's convex core. Convex hull. Well, it's not the core, but the hull. So um, it's easy to see the lambda g is uh, g invariant. Because uh, if uh, some point is fixed by gamma, then uh, it's, well, so, so, suppose gamma z is z, then uh, g z is uh, uh, um, so, uh, if you just consider G here, then it, it's uh, so, uh, so, 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 so it's uh, something like that. So uh, it's fixed by, okay. It's fixed by, I should write this. So if you consider that, then uh, so this eliminate, eliminate each other. So it's a G gamma Z. But gamma z is z, so it's gz. So gz is fixed by this. Okay. So this means uh, the the image of the fixed point and some element of g is again a, a, again a fixed point of some element of g, some other element of g. So uh, the, before taking the closure, this is g g invariant. So that means you, uh, even after taking the closure, it's a G invariant. So the lambda G is a G invariant set. And the action of the isometry of, on, on H3 uh, extends to the action of the uh, uh, linear fractional transformation of the Riemann sphere. So, uh, if lambda g is invariant, then uh, uh, any geodesic whose endpoint at infinity uh, lie in lambda g is mapped to the same kind of the geodesic by, by an element of g. So, uh, so hg is also g invariant. Again, this this the the, the small the, this condition the com convex convexity is preserved by isometry, and uh, the condition that is smallest is in, invariant uh, uh, under the under the under the under the, under the action of G. So uh, that's uh, the H G is G invariant. Okay. So you can take the quotient of H G by G. 
Okay? And it's a closed subset, convex closed subset in inside H3 over G. Okay? And when the volume of this one is finite, G is called geometrically finite. So, uh, Huxian group, for instance, is geometrically finite. Um, why? Because um, in that case, the limit set is uh, the one point compactification of our uh, real axis. Okay? So, uh, if two points so if two point, so it, it that uh, so the the limit set is one point complication of the R. Well, it it, it doesn't look like uh, at the center, but so uh, I should draw it again. So uh, it should be that. And so any geodesic joining the the two point in a R axis should lie in a, in a totally geodesic plane bounded by the real axis. Okay. So, um, if you take the quotient of this plane, well, what you get is some totally geodesic plane, but to totally geodesic surface embedded in a, a H3. So, so this is the case with G function. So it's uh, the, the total is geodesic surface. That, that's HG over G. So volume, because this is three-dimensional <laughs> manifold, if this is two-dimensional, the volume is zero. So uh, zero is finite. <laughs> so, so, so it's, uh, it's a geometrical finite. So in general, in general, for, for, for any, any group in, in QFS is geometrically finite. So in that case, uh, the, it's not totally geodesic anymore, but the, it, it gives some compact free manifold, which is homeomorphic, the, the, so, so the, this Caution. This is called a convex core. So, uh, for a quadrifuction group, its convex core <coughs> is a compact three manifold homeomorphic to surface closed interval. So, uh, it's again uh, finite. So, com if it's compact, it's finite volume. So, it's, uh, it's okay. okay. Hi. Yeah. That's that's a good question, but it's very <laughs> difficult to construct it. So if I, so I, so I, I prepared my talk so that uh, well in a, in maybe in a half an hour or something, then then I, I I will show you some example of geometrical infinite group, but I, I'm not sure that if I have enough time to reach there, but uh, so it, 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 it's not easy. Actually, the first example was constructed by Bears in the 1970s, and uh, that relies on, uh, on uh, well, some, uh, some kind of the, the, the theory involving the lens comparison or something, and, uh, and I, I, I will show you the, the how to do that in, uh, if, you, if I have time. Okay. Any, any other questions? Okay.
Now, um, I, I, I should define one more condition that the, the minimally hyperbolic. So uh, I told you that. Um, so uh, if if a Kleinian group contains rank to a variant, then, then that should be conjugate. This should be conjugate. This must be conjugate to this one. Okay. But the possibility that so so the so, so, and 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 moreover, again, it's not difficult to see that the Kleinian group cannot contain uh, an abelian group of rank greater than two. So there's no abelian group of rank three inside the Kleinian group. So because if you try to put it one more parabolic element there, then the, the discreteness breaks down. So, uh, so the, this is uh, the, the uh, highest rank for an abelian group. But, well, it, Kleinian group can contain uh, rank one abelian group in, uh, in many ways. So if you have a parabolic element, then uh, it, it, it's, uh, if you consider the, just uh, the, its powers, then uh, it, it's uh, an, uh, rank one Albert, it, it, it gives a rank one Albert group. And if, if you have a uh, loxodromic element, uh, again, if you consider the, its powers, then uh, it's uh, uh, a variant group of rank one. So the uh, G is said to be minimally parabolic if any maximal parabolic subgroup is rank 2. So if you have a parabolic element then it appears only as an element in a rank 2 parabolic subgroup. So that's the condition of the minimal parabolicity. Professor? Yep. What is the definition of par parabolic subgroup? Par parabolic subgroup is a, a group consisting of the par parab parabolics. So the, it's, a, it's, a, it, it's, a, it's a something con conjugate to a, um, so, so, so if, we, if it's a subgroup consisting of uh, parabolics, parabolic elements, and, and pr probably in the identity, <laughs> is uh, called a parabolic subgroup. So we, um, um, we, so here we, we, we eliminate the case when uh, you have a parabolic subgroup, uh, maximal parabolic subgroup, which is rank one. And so, so let me remind you that first on prove that any M, as, as we are considering now, admits, well, its interior admits uh, uh, minimally parabolic geometrically finite hyperbolic structure. So you so that that what corresponds to a Fuchsian representation in the case of surface group. So you have M, 
and the subsistence sort of implies there exists a, a hyperbolic metallic, complete hyperbolic metallic M on the interior of M. And its holonomy gives a, a faithful, discrete representation of oh, oh, it's M, S, it's M so it, of the pi 1 of M to P S L to C. Okay? It's a faithful discrete. Now you can consider the quasi conformal deformation. So, well, what was quasi conformal deformation? So, if you have a homeomorphism from Riemann sphere to Riemann sphere, which is quasi uh, conformal, that means this is less than one. And if the, the conjugate of the, this one, so, so um, I mean, um, if for any gamma in a pi 1 m, this lies in a p s uh, to c, then uh, this representation is said to be the uh, quasi-conformal deformation of phi. So that's the same as in the case of the, of the quasi-fuction representation. Okay. So now we can define the quasi-conformal deformation space for M. So uh, they, this should correspond to quasi, uh, friction representation. So you, you, if you consider the quasi conformal deformation of this representation, then you get the quasi conformal deformation space. So that uh, uh, Q C deformations of phi modular conjugacy. So you may wa wonder if the, uh, that definition depends on uh, the choice of phi here. So the, because um, the, uh, actually it's a choice of the hyperbolic metric here. So the, there is a freedom of choice for the hyperbolic structure, but it turns out it doesn't depend on the, on the choice. So it's a, it, you get the same space. One. Yep. Oh, because it's uh, it's uh, obtained by a quasi-conformal map. So this is a quasi-conformal map. Th this is QC map. So it's uh, conjugate. Co it's it obtained as a, con a conjugate of the original representation using the quasi-conformal homeomorphism of Riemann sphere. So by definition, this is a subset of, uh, of AH M. But moreover, we know that this is actually contained in an HM. So the after after conformal deformation, the homeomorphism type of the quotient doesn't change, so uh, it, uh, it it lies inside H of M. And also, uh, so in the case of the quasi-fuction space, you have a parameterization using the Teichmuller space. 
So here you have also a parameterization. So we define the omega of phi as a, as a complement of the limit set. So, so pi 1 over Then, uh, so this, this, is a, this, is, this was a closed subset. So this is an open subset. Um, which, so, so um, um, a priori this might be empty, but if you assume that uh, M has a boundary component, which is not a torus, then it turns out that uh, uh, this cannot be the entire Riemann sphere and uh, you have a non-empty omega. Anyway, so the, um, then you can consider the, co so because this set is uh, phi pi 1 of M invariant, its complement is also invariant. So you can consider the quotient of this one by that group. And so uh, th this is a Riemann surface. So this is a domain in a, in, a, in a Riemann sphere, so it has a conformal structure induced from that of the Riemann sphere. So, uh, and, the, and the, this acts as a, as a conformal automorphism. So uh, you can consider the if you consider the quotient, then it's a Riemann surface. Okay. And actually, the, the, the assumption that, pi, that uh, the pi 1 of M is compact, uh, that is the pi 1 of M is finitely generated, implies this Riemann surface is of finite type. So uh, it, it, it has a finite genus and finite punctures, and there's no open boundary. So you can consider the Tai-Himura space of that. And uh, you have um, actually the surjection, or, or more, maybe it's better to say covering, from the Tai-Himura space to QH of M. That, that result of modern. So you have a parameterization. So you, um, the natural question is, so, so it's contained there. So the natural question is that if they uh, coincide or not. So in the case of the quasi function, uh, the, uh, it, actually, the, 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 well, we know that it, 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 they not, do not coincide. And uh, in general, so uh, the, the, the complement is not empty. So, um, there is an exceptional case, uh, well, probably only one case, so you, which, which you can. Uh, well, I, I mean, uh, the exceptional case is either um, the um, QHM is kind of trivial, right? that is, uh, the QHM consists of one point. Oh, well, well, maybe that, that, that's the only case. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. That, that's the only uh, exceptional case. So, so if QHM consists of one point, then uh, QHM and HM are the, the same. <laughs> but uh, except for that case, the, if the deformation space is non-trivial, that means this uh, Teichmüller space is non-trivial, then uh, HM has a point outside QH of M. Actually, the, 
there is a complete list of the groups in HM minus QHM oh, 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 complete list of geometrically finite groups in H HM mi minus QHM actually the, if the uh, group has a property that, which is a uh, 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 property that uh, the group is uh, minimally parabolic also, then uh, that should lie in the QHM. So all the geometrical finite groups lying outside QHM are non-minimally non parabolic. And uh, for that, that, you can just uh, this comes from the, the theorem, my, my theorem actually, in 1998. So you, you can just have a list. It, there, there are actually uncomfortably, in general, there are uncomfortably many <laughs> groups are in there, but you, you can parameterize them using the tight humidity space again. But these are on, only for what geometry. Uh, finite groups. So if you also uh, take geometrically infinite groups into consideration, then what you can say is this. So again, the theorem. Um, so uh, um, HM is contained in the closure of QHM. In the closure is taken in the closure in the space of the representations modulo conjugacy. So any any element in a, uh, in, a, in, in HM is obtained as a limit of the QHM. And AHM, for AHM, AHM was larger than, so, so it was obtained that way. So it, uh, it's uh, just a union of QHN, closure of QHNs, where the uh, uh, N is homotopy equivalent to M. So that, that's also my, my theorem, and uh, independently in Amazi, and so to prove that. So, and I, I should add one more thing here, Sullivan's theorem. So that, that's also I talked about in, in the case of the, uh, of the surface group. So the interior, of the um, HM is uh, QHM. So again, the interior means the interior in in the in the in this space. Okay. So, uh, any question up to you? Yep. <laughs> Uh, the, the, the distance union is the set of first distance. This? Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. The, it's, it's not the disjoint union. So it, it, it looks like the disjoint union. This one? The, this is just a union. That one that uh, Oh, this one? Yeah. Only set of curve is to union. Or uh, topologically, uh, they are connected components. They are components. Um, no, no, no. So the, actually, the, the um, so uh, actually the big picture is very complicated. So if you so if you consider this before taking closure, this is a disjoint union, and they are. So if if we if we consider the um, um, 
But if you take the closure, um, they touch the two distinct QH, touch each other. And then, so uh, the picture is very complicated. So you, if you have some, something like, <laughs> like that. So uh, the, the, these are not connected components. They, 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 they are somehow the touch each other. One simple question. Um, how do you know that H, A, H, M is like manifold? It's, it's not a manifold. It's not a manifold. It's not a manifold. It's, it's known. No, 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 it's not, it's proved that it's not a manifold. Okay. What kind of stuff is it then? Huh? Like, what topological? Oh, oh, it's, a, it's, a, it's not known. It's, a, it's, it's not well understood. Okay. Actually, so that it's known that, that its boundary is not locally connected. Okay. So it's very complicated kind of uh, topological space. And, uh, well, it, for instance, it, it's not, well, st still we don't have a list of the points where the, uh, where, where the space is lo not locally connected or the, um, well, we don't know what kind of the topological type the boundary has. But the interior is very simple. Interior is just uh, covered by Euclidean space and it's a manifold open manifold. So the, it's an open manifold, but if you, when, after you take the closure, then you, you have a very bad kind of point, and that, that makes the, the space uh, very complicated. What's the dimension of the interior? The, the dimension of the interior is the dimension of the uh, Tychimera space, so it's, uh, it can be just uh, computed. So the, if you know the genus of the boundary components, then uh, you can just comp compute it. So any other questions? Yep. Well, well, which one? This one? Yes. This this is con this is a, so this is so so you if you have a so this is a union of the fi finite many surfaces like that. So now it's Tychimera space is just a product of the each Tychimera spaces. So, uh, so it's connected. It's just a Euclidean space. I mean, what well, well, it says is there are many components, right? Many. It's a union of finally many surfaces. Yeah. The surface is uh, uh, just a bound, so it, it corresponds to the boundary components of the M. I, I except, except for the torus. So, so if you have a torus boundary component, it, it doesn't appear here. But uh, the union of the boundary components whose genus is greater than one is exactly the surface here. Yeah, just ask whether the quotient of omega phi is connected surface. Quotient of the omega phi is uh, is uh, homeomorphic to the, the the that one. So that if you have more than two, more than one com connected components, then the, 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 this is not connected. But the Tychimera space is connected. <laughs> Any, any, any other questions? Okay, now, now we, we are going to talk about uh, um, geometrical infinite groups. So how, how you can get the geometrical infinite groups. So uh, now we should return to the simplest case, which is a, a, a surface group case. So uh, this is a new section, it's geometrically infinite. 
groups. So, uh, we, so, cons, cons, so the, may, maybe uh, I don't have time to deal with other groups, but uh, we start with from surface groups. So, let me remind you that you have a um, parameterization of quadrifunction space by a product of two Tihimura spaces. Okay. Maybe QF should be a good symbol to uh, denote this map. And the theorem proved by Bears saying that if you, for, for any, for any point in the Teichmiller space or, or the, in a se second Teichmiller space, um, the product, of, so if you fix the first uh, factor, first coordinate, and uh, consider its image by QF, which, which usually written as M, M, B, M naught, or the, if you fix the second coordinate and consider the product of with the Teichmiller space, this should be writ writ written as uh, B and not, but probably B, B is prime. So if we, we can consider the, these two kinds of so because this is homeomorphism, this is just an image of the Euclidean space inside QFS. And uh, take the closure. In um, in uh, AHS or in the representation space, they, they are the same thing. But uh, probably the, it's better to understand. It's easier to understand to take a closure in AHS. So in in that in this case, it, it's the same as HS. So uh, then, so it's closure. Then they are, um, so, so we, we consider the, the closures of both, then uh, they are compact. <coughs> okay. So that means if you have a sequence of quadrifunction groups which doesn't converge inside the, the space, then after passing to a subsequence, you get the, some Kleinian group, some representation in, in the AH of S. Okay. So now we consider the, the boundary of the, the disclosure. So, so that means we consider, for, for instance, the Oh, 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 B. And you can show that this contains only countably many. Um, <laughs> no, it's it's not. Um, the, the number itself is uh, uncountable in many, but uh, may, maybe it's better to say this way. So, so this, um, the, the set of geometrically finite groups in this one has positive Co-dimension. That means if you consider the, the geometrically finite groups inside this boundary, then so so I mean uh, the probability. So if you pick up a group from this boundary, then the probability 
for the point to be geometrically finite is zero. So that means, that means, so most of points in this boundary correspond to geometrically infinite groups. Okay. So, uh, any question? Okay. How, how does one find mention? Um, it actually it's embedded in a, in a Euclidean space. Oh. You, you you have an embedding okay. of this space into the Euclidean space, and uh, so you can talk about measure there. But this is a kind of existence theorem, so you don't have a any way to construct the uh, uh, geometrical finite group if, if you just uh, follow the, his argument. But, so uh, you can construct it well, concretely by, uh, well, you, if you use uh, some modern technique. So it, it, it appeared in the uh, 1970s, so they, at that time we, so we, we didn't have a theory of a system. So, uh, <laughs> So what he could do is just rely on the, on the complex analysis. So so that, that that that's why the the statement is something like a, like a existence theorem. But now we we have a technique of system. So so Koji talked about the pseudo Anosov map. Also, the Mladen talk that the pseudo Anosov map appeared. So so it's a generic uh, homeomorphism. And so uh, you consider, so instead of the general slice like that, you consider the so fix M0 and N0. Uh, uh, uh. And consider the Iteration, maybe pullback is more natural than the push, push, <laughs> pushing forward. So the may, maybe this would be better. So you you consider a sequence like that. So you fix the first coordinate, and the second coordinate is changed by twisting with respect to the Sudanosov map. Okay. And by this theorem of bears, we know that after passing to a subsequence, actually we, we know that we, we don't need to uh, take a subsequence in this case, but anyway, so we know that they, 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 they should converge to some representation, faithful discrete representation in the edge of it. And we can prove this is geometrically infinite. Infinite. And also minimally parabolic. Why would you assume that to be geometrically infinite? What's the intuition behind what, what, what? What's the intuition behind that? Uh, behind, you see, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, will, I, will, I, will, I will explain it okay. in, a, in a moment. So, uh, so actually we know that what kind of geometry the, the corresponding hyperbolic 3 manifold have. So uh, H3 over psi of pi 1 of s. Okay. And first, we, we, we should consider convex core of this manifold. Actually, 
it, it has form like that. So, on one side, the convex core is same, something like this. So you, you have a, you, you sh so the, the part, the, the, the neighborhood of ends, and down here lies outside the convex core. So you have a boundary of convex core here, appearing here, which is homeomorphic to S. On the other hand, on this side, convex core extend to the infinity. So uh, topologically, you have a surface, sequence of surfaces going to the infinity. And so this map was assumed to be pseudo anothoff and the pseudo anothoff map has something called a stable lamination or stable foliation. And it's uh, kind of the, the uh, so lamination or foliation on the surface is a li limit of a, the sequence of a simple closed curves. So if you take a s sequence of simple closed curve on the on surface and, and uh, get it more and more complicated, then what you get at the limit is something called a lamination. So you have a, you have a, a stable lamination, F, or, and then there's a sequence of the Maybe lambda and the sequence of simple closed curve converging to that lamination. And if you try to realize this simple closed curve in a three manifold as a closed geodesic, so this is a closed geodesic homotopic, homotopic to, to psi ci, then this should tend to infinity. So uh, you have a sequence of closed geodesic going out from any compact set. So this is possible only when the manifold is geometrically infinite. Because if the manifold is geometrically finite, then any closed geodesic should lie in the convex core. And because the convex core has finite volume, there's no way to escape from convex core. So so this shows the manifold must be geometrically infinite. Okay. So any questions? So the, this was the surface group case, and uh, actually, so the, the, this can be done for any M. So uh, for any M, the closure. Well, so uh, most of points in uh, geometrical infinite and uh, there's a way to construct the uh, geometrical infinite groups concretely by using uh, iteration of the maps or like something like that. So the the, this is a consequence of a, a Klein Nandam Suto and uh, Inkan King, Cyril Lecuy, and myself.
How much of geometrically infinite ones consist of the ones constructed there? Um, um, so, uh, actually, the, uh, again, uh, it, uh, well, well, actually, the, so uh, the, this, this is probability zero. <laughs> I mean, uh, because uh, uh, th this is the iteration, okay, and uh, the lamination appearing as a, as a stable lamination is a kind of la rare. On the other hand, these are the, these kind of the geometrical infinite groups are dense. Dense, but probability zero. <laughs> so it's like a rational numbers. Uh, I think, uh, well, I, I can go on to describe something more, but uh, may maybe it's, uh, it's better to stop here, so this, because it's a <laughs> good point to stop. Yeah. So thank you very much.